Let's solve the 12th challenge on Neetanot called privacy. So I'll scroll down and take a look at what the objective of this challenge is. The goal of this challenge is to unlock this contract to beat the level. So I'll scroll down and then copy this contract over to my editor. Also scroll down further and get a new instance for this challenge. Click on get new instance and then confirm the transaction. Okay, I've copied the code over from Ethernet over to my code editor. And as a reminder, the objective of this challenge is to unlock this contract below. Specifically, what we have to do is this state variable called locked, it is first set to true. What we'll have to do is somehow set this lock to false. And to do that, the only way we can do it is to call the function unlock. For us to be able to call this function successfully, there is a condition that we'll have to meet. It takes in an input of key of bytes 16, 16 bytes. And then this input has to be equal to the second data stored in a state variable named data. If I look at the state variable data, it is a fixed size array of three that stores 32 bytes. This state variable is private, so there is no getter that we can just call and get the data stored in the second slot for this state variable data. Let's quickly review how the state variables are stored in a smart contract. Imagine that you have an array of length 2 to the 256 minus 1. That is a really big array. That is how the storage of a smart contract is laid out. I won't go into details how the state variables are stored in this giant array of size 2 to the 256 minus 1. In the most simple case, they follow two rules. The order that we define the state variable inside our contract determines where in the slot these state variables will be stored. For example, this contract declares boolean locked as the first state variable. So this will be stored in slot 0. Each slot can hold up to 32 bytes. The second state variable is an ID and it is uint256. uint256 takes up 32 bytes. So this will be stored in slot 1. The next state variable is called fattening and it is a uint8. uint8 only takes up 1 byte, so this will be stored in slot 2. For the next state variable, we have another uint8 and it is called denomination. Now recall that each slot can store up to 32 bytes. And for the first part, the state variable fattening only took up one byte. So again, this state variable denomination will also be stored in slot two. So now that is two bytes. uint16, that will take up two bytes. And we only used up two bytes out of the 32 bytes that is available in slot two. So again, this will be in slot two. For fixed sized arrays, these arrays will use up the slot that is available next. The slot that we are currently on is slot 2, and so far we've used up 4 bytes. Now this bytes array, 32 bytes array, the next element will use 32 bytes, so we'll have to move to slot 3. We cannot fit each element of data inside slot 2. So we we'll have to use slot 3, slot 4 for the first element, and slot 5 for the second element. This will be the last element in the array data. So now we know which slot each of these private state variables are stored. So going back to our function on doc, we need to get the data at index 2. This will be the last element in the data, so this will be in slot 5. Later, we'll use Web3 to get this data, and then we'll need to shorten it to byte 16, and then call a function unlock with the data. So the next step is to get this data stored at index 2, since this element will be 32 bytes, but we'll have to shorten it to 16 bytes. I'm back inside my Ethernet, and to get the private data, I'm going to be using Web3.js library. And to do that, I'll type F12 to open my browser console. And then first, let's get the contract address. So ADDR, I'll assign this to a variable. This will be equal to this address that I see over here. And then I'll assign it to a variable called ADDR. And to get the private data at this contract address, I'll type a wait web 3eget storage at for the first input, I'll pass in the address of the contract, ADDR, and then we'll need to pass in the index of the slot that we want to retrieve. The index of the private state variable that we want to get is 5, and then execute this function. Okay, so that is the data stored at the state variable data at index 2. Now this is 32 bytes, so we'll need to shorten this to 16 bytes. So to do that, I'll say data is equal to this 32 bytes from above. 
and then we'll shorten it to 16 bytes. The first two character is a 0x and from there we'll need to get 16 bytes. Each two characters represents one byte. So to get 16 bytes, we'll need to read the next 32 characters. So that is data dot slice from zero to the first two is a zero X. So that will be two. And then from there, we'll need to read 16 bytes. Every two characters, one byte. So that will be 16 times two. Or we can simplify this expression to say 34. And that is the data that we'll need to pass and then call the function unlock. I copy the code from Itana over to Remix, and I also copy the key that we just retrieved. Now let's call the function unlock passing this as input. So I'll click on deployment tab, make sure that I'm connected to the Goily testnet, and then there is no contract to deploy, we'll just need to load this privacy contract. So to do that, I'll go get the address of this privacy contract back from Ethernet. In Ethernet, type F12, and then copy this contract address back inside Remix. I'll paste the address of the contract here and then load this privacy contract, expand the contract, and then we'll call this function on log passing this secret as input. Paste call function on log. Notice that the transaction will be successful. So this means that this part of the condition is met. Click confirm. Okay, the transaction was successful. Let's double check that the state variable locked is set to false. Click on lock and it returns false. The last step of this challenge is to submit our instance. Confirm. Okay, you can see here that we won the challenge, so see you in the next one.